of Afterglow. Uh, this one was kind of recorded off the cuff. I wasn't expecting to uh, record when we did it. However, plans for another podcast had to be altered. So we did an off the cuff episode of Afterglow uh, where we talked about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 4 Eternals in Time on the Super Nintendo. And I keep saying we because there's a special guest on this one. Uh, Goobs from Secret Levels joined in, and uh, we had a fun time discussing our memories of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Uh, we mostly stuck to the Super Nintendo game, but uh, we did dive a little bit into the arcade game and into the reshelled game that uh, was released. But uh, I think we had a really, really fun talk about our history with this game with the Turtles in general. I hope you guys enjoy listening to it, and we will have that after the music cut. episode 43. Uh, today we're going to be talking about Turtles in Time for the Super Nintendo. We do have a guest on the show if you want to introduce yourself, plug your stuff. Hey there everyone, this is Goobs from the Secret Levels podcast. I can't wait to talk some Ninja Turtles and kick some shell. Dude, that game was so good. So um, what was your like first experience with the game, like the first time you had seen anything about it? Like uh, was it a uh, gaming magazine? Was it a random arcade machine? Well, back in the 80s, because uh, I'm old, just like you are, <laughs> 80, the Turtles ruled everything back in the 80s, early 90s, so you couldn't really go anywhere without seeing something Ninja Turtles. I was a big fan of the cartoon. I watched, uh, had all the toys as well, the movies, of course, and then, uh, yeah, you would follow Nintendo Power, and you see bips, bleeps and boops everywhere about the Turtles game coming out. The first one all kicked our ass. We all know that. The good old uh, water stage. We all remember that and have something like a deep scar inside of our heart from that level. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah. So you keep your eyes peeled in Nintendo power or EGM or game pro, whatever magazine you're reading. And then you see something about turtles and time. And you're like, Oh shit. Now somehow, then, uh, somehow I missed out on all that. Like the last turtles game that I had known of was uh, turtles two on the NES. I even completely missed uh, the Manhattan project for the NES. But um, I happened to be in a Walmart, and they had the arcade machine for uh, the Ninja Turtles 
uh, Turtles in Time. And of course, before I saw the arcade machine, I heard it. And uh, oh yeah, that's a loud boy. Yep the the Pizza Power theme song. <laughs> Classic. Yep, that was the first time I had seen it, and I'm like, I didn't have the change to actually pop in the corner and play it. I was just like looking at the attract mode for a good, you know, five minutes waiting on my uh, parents' shop, going, "Whoa, that's cool." <laughs> Yeah, we, uh, I used to go to the mall with my grandma every Saturday, Nanny Froggy. If you listen to Secret Level Show, you know we talk fondly about her. And then, uh, yeah, we always go to the arcade after we were done shopping, after we had lunch as well. And yeah, we pumped in so many quarters. She kept on giving me as soon as I saw this game, it was finally out. Yep, so my, my first play experience was uh, I managed to uh, rent it. At the uh, game rail store, I always talk about in uh, Oakland. That'd be a hard one to get. Uh, it was at first, but um, like I said, I managed to get a rental for it, and I had um, this cool uh, Super Nintendo controller. It was a unique one because it was like the ar- arcade layout. Okay. Um, I think uh, we looked it up in the chat one day. It was like a Nyko or something, but it was a unique controller because it had a Super Nintendo and a Sega Genesis plug. You can like use it in either system. Oh, that's pretty rad. So uh, that's the closest I got to the arcade controls, and uh, I really liked it. Like, even the graphical style where you uh, went into a level and you'd have, like, the shadow of the boss walking before the level, I thought was really cool. And then the names of the levels as well. It's it's so iconic and nostalgia at this point. Oh, yeah. It, 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 like, the what they did was really, really cool, especially with the hardware available. Like, um... The first time you figured out you could throw an enemy at the screen, what did you think? Oh my god. It was like the best. You're like, oh, it's coming right at me. And then like it hits the screen and you're, you, have, you have to fight the boss. Like that's how you hit them. Mm-hmm. So it's just like, man, this is actually like used in the game. It's not just something cool. It's actually useful. Now, when that Yeah, that's mind-blowing, man. As a kid seeing that, whew. Oh, yeah, it was wild. Now, whenever you were playing the Sipper version, did you know the differences between it and the arcade? I didn't at the time. No, I was too stupid to figure that out. Yeah, I, I was too. Like, the few times I got to play the arcade, I didn't get that far into it. So I thought that the Sipper Nintendo version was almost like a one-to-one copy. I didn't realize till later, like, the Technodrome stuff was all, like, yeah, extra and added, along with the final Sipper Shredder boss, which was different yeah. as well. The Super Nintendo version does hold up, though. It's pretty fun. Oh, yeah, easily. Uh, you could go play it today, and it still feels good. Um, did you ever actually buy a copy, or was it just a rental for you? Uh, we did end up getting it in the house, and I don't know how I got it. I think it might have been used from a video store and or a garage sale. But then again, I had to buy this game a couple times, because this is one of those games that you would lend out to your friends. And all of a sudden, it's gone. <laughs> well, I don't know where it is, because it's such a good game. So yep. PSA from Goobs, don't lend out good games. <laughs> you might not get them back. Yeah, for, for me, it was always a rental, because I could never actually find a copy. Um, later on, I did buy a copy of uh, Turtles Tournament Fighters, I found. But I never found this one until I actually started gaming collecting, like, after the year 2000. Yeah, there's probably a reason why you could find Terminator Fighters before this. <laughs> <laughs> Now, I, I will say that I did like Tournament Fighters, but this game is far superior. Oh, yeah, so, especially when you get some friends going. Who's a, what, What's your favorite turtle? Who's your favorite turtle? Uh, whenever I played this game specifically, it would be Donatello. My favorite, uh, my favorite at the time would have been Michelangelo, like overall just for turtles. But if I'm playing this game, I wanted to use that bow staff. You want that reach. See, I've been a Donnie boy through and through. Like cartoons uh shows i always play with my donatello figure the one in the trench coat Mm -hmm. we all know that figure yeah now i was a weird one because whenever i was a kid my favorite was michelangelo but like as i got older like honestly i kind of understand Raphael a bit more than i did as a kid (laughs) yeah you start to feel more angsty throughout your life and like yeah maybe i'm raf Right? So it's like after, you know, a couple decades of work in the full-time job and everything, it's like, you know, I understand his anger now. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> like, stop telling me what to do, Leo. <laughs> so, um, 
how often were you able to actually get a multiplayer game going with this? Like, for me, I could only do it whenever I had a buddy spend the night, and I was able to get a copy of the game rented, so it only happened, like, four or five times. It was a blast whenever we managed to pull it off, though. Yeah, we were, uh, every Saturday we'd go hang with the cousins, like, after we went to the mall and everything, so we had, like, a, the family always hung out every Saturday, so it was no problem getting, uh, like, especially if someone brought over a multi-tap. Mm-hmm. No problem getting uh, the cousins to play. You I don't said, know if the multi tap worked on that or not. Okay, I was getting ready to say you said multi tap. I didn't know if this game had four player or not. I'm really like, I don't know. I've ever played it with two, maybe four. I don't know. It's hard to remember. Well, later on, I got lucky for a while. I had the arcade one up machine that had uh, the original game and this one, but it was like oh, the cool. arcade version. I uh, managed to get my kids to play it, and uh, we did a four player mode using a. Me and the three kids, and I'll tell you what, that was a blast. But I did notice that, uh, I guess as gaming evolves, people's taste kind of change too. Like, they would lose interest after, like, the fourth or fifth stage. It is very much a rinse and repeat kind of game. But then, I love the simplicity of it. The uh, music keeps me going, the graphics, everything. And I think part of it might be that the uh, you and I have a huge nostalgia for the Turtles, and it's not really there for like the current generation for the most part. No, like the Turtles, the Turtles are still have a good been IP. around. Yeah, and they're still a strong IP, but they're definitely not what they were in the '80s. Like, you no. know, you talk about Turtles these days, like, oh yeah, I've, I've watched newer cartoons and everything. Whereas back then, it was just a phenomenon. It was a lifestyle. Yeah, I I can't tell you the like the hugeness. Of my fandom for that entire thing like i would like get up early to watch the cartoons like no nah, i can't miss this you know and e even if it's a rerun i've watched it 15 20 times i still had to watch it hell yeah i mean shell yeah <laughs> uh, I, I love how they uh changed it it's it kind of a funny thing my parents are like really really like religious people so whenever they heard the turtles going shell yeah with one of the reboots i don't think they did that in the uh original i think in the original it was just like let's kick shell yeah and, and then they start hearing shell yeah and they're like oh no <laughs> like it's okay <laughs> it, it's a cartoon guys don't be that uptight over it <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're just giant turtles it's like they're oh no they wouldn't like them because they evolved oh yeah heaven forbid we can't have that <laughs> yeah there's no such thing as evolution <laughs> <laughs> creationism <laughs> but uh, I'll tell you what, though, I had so much fun with the Super Nintendo version. Um, now, you said you managed to buy yours, like, two or three different times. Like, where did you uh, find it at? Oh, I was just playing an arm and a leg from <laughs> different stores or other places like that, like collection shops. <clears throat> like, I looked whenever I was a kid, and, like, I couldn't get a copy of it. Like, a lot of my Super games... Oh, these are throughout the years, like, later on in life as well. Like, a lot of my slipper games, they came from, like, uh, I don't know if you had them up where you're at, but there was, like, a budget bin where uh, a lot of the games were, like, they weren't in the regular cardboard Super Nintendo boxes, but they were, like, a generic cardboard box, and the cartridge was, like, slapped in the middle of it, and it was saran-wrapped. I've seen stuff like that, yeah. Like, I got so many of my games that way, so, of course, I'd be digging around looking for this game. Never found it that way. Like I said, I didn't even find a copy until eventually I uh, start collecting and I want to say I could be wrong here but I want to say I picked it up at McVans but the label on my copy is like half destroyed <laughs> you picked it up at McMahon's and there's no transition shell you picked that up there <laughs> <laughs> it's like I don't even know how big McVans is I know they've got like two or three oh, I was just making a oh, I know. crappy wrestling joke <laughs> <laughs> that'd be amazing <laughs> No, they do have a weird orange logo, but, uh, I mean, I haven't been up there in a while, but they used to be, like, an awesome place to pick up older stuff if you were collecting. But uh, I got my copy for really cheap, because, like I said, my label is, like, nuked. You can barely tell it's a Ninja Turtles game. As long as you have it. Oh, yeah, it's an absolute blast. I, uh... Uh, again, wish it did have four-player compatibility, because, like... We did, uh... Like, every time we go to, like, a barcade or something now, even if there's other people on it, we always jump on, uh, the arcade machine. Yep. 
Now, did you play, and hope the buttons work? <laughs> did you play like the reshelled one whenever it came out for 360 and PS3? Yep, I have that on my uh, Xbox still. Uh, that's like a collector's thing because you can't get it now. Same with the Simpsons arcade. Yep, uh, it's really a shame that you can't get because I know the reshelled version did not get good reviews at all. But for what it was, I thought it was a decent game. Yeah, it wasn't bad. I haven't played it in a long time, but well, I remember like, having it. Like, I don't know if people's got, like, nostalgia goggles, and then they actually played it and were disappointed because it is a, you know, standard, standard side-scrolling beat-em-up. I thought it was pretty good. I, I kind of wanted to see them do, like, a similar remake to the original Turtles arcade game, too, but, of course, because Reshell didn't do well, I, I guess yeah. it kind of killed that. So, what was your favorite level? Oh, uh, it might just be the first one. Big Apple, 3 a.m. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> when you, you know you're in for a good time when you hear that music start. And you hear, when you hear Big Apple, 3 a.m., you know exactly what you're doing. You're going through, you're going through you're going to see Krang's big fat head pop around in the background, and then you're going to kick the shit out of Baxter Stockman. The, the giant Krang popping up was a cool touch in that level, too. <laughs> And uh, you get to see all the foot soldiers and like how brightly colored and awesome they are. Like you can't I'm, beat it. It's probably one of the best levels in any video game. I'm kind of torn between two for my favorites. One would be the Technodrome just for that boss fight against Shredder, where you got chuck the foot soldiers at him. Like that, oh yeah, that was a really cool moment. And then uh, Neon Knight Riders, where you ride the uh, oh of course, and that Everboard. music too kicks butt. Mm-hmm. And uh, the Super Nintendo, if I remember right, uh, they used the Mode 7 stuff really heavily in that one, where the yes, uh, fake version was only side-scrolling, if I remember right. Yeah, that was the case. Okay, I wanted to make sure I had that right. So it's been a little bit since I played it. I need to go reload it, but I had so much fun with it. So, favorite level, uh, you already said your favorite turtle, Donatello, right? Uh, favorite boss, what was your fa the boss fight that you enjoyed the most? Oh, that's a tough one. They're all, they're all quite the same. They're all quite fun. It, it have to be that Shredder one that you mentioned. It's yeah, just that, how different it is. That one had a, a unique one I liked. Um, I did kind of like the Krang and the big, like, UFO-looking thing. <laughs> Just because oh, yeah, that's like, a lot of fun, too. He'd, like, drop the uh, extra enemies that you'd have to take out. I thought that was pretty neat. On Leatherhead? Mm-hmm. It was cool seeing some of those, like, uh, side characters as well. Yeah, it, it was like, cool oh. to see uh, Rocksteady and Bebop plus Telco and Razar in the same game, too. Yes. Uh, like, I was really glad when to see both of them. Also, one of my favorite moments, too, is when they shrink down to, like, the... The wolf and the uh, turtle, or the yeah. dog and the turtle, whatever he is. Yeah, that, that was a cool scene. It's like, hey, I saved them. <laughs> like, may maybe they're good guys in this form. <laughs> okay, so before we wrap it up, uh, what's your rule on the pizza? I'm sure we all got the same rule. Whoever has the lowest life. Yep, absolutely. And uh, if someone has like almost full life and they grab the pizza, that's like grounds for like, a strike. Oh, yeah. Straight you, dick kick. <laughs> you always uh, apologize profusely. Like sometimes, if you if you don't know like what you're doing and you end up hitting it by accident, like oh shoot, sorry. Yeah, it's like you apologize fast. If you don't, it's like oh, I need it more than you because you're a better. Or player. you're just uh, chaotic. <laughs> yeah, I'm saying, oh god, I'm so sorry. Don't kick me in the dick later. <laughs> or no, you're just doing it on purpose to screw someone over. Oh, yeah. There's that, people out there like chaos. <laughs> that's such an evil move, though, because, like, at the end of the day, it's like, I want to see the ending of the game. Don't screw it up for us. <laughs> that's like in the newer uh, Turtles game, Shredder's Revenge, when you're playing online with friends. You can play online with a lot of friends on that game. <laughs> like, okay, who needs it? Looking at the health bar. Yep. <laughs> okay, you go grab that, Goobs. They did such a good job with that game, playing, paying homage to all the other Turtle side scrolling. Game oh, that maps. game is fantastic! Yeah, anyone listening out there, if you liked uh, Turtles in Time, you've got to try the uh, new Turtles game. Like the Shredder's Revenge is such a blast. Yeah, and, that gets uh, a 
a high, high praise for me. And of course, if you want some uh, multiplayer turtles in time, they've got the uh, Turtles collection that came out, the Cowbunga collection, which it's got this game on it. And again, it's worthwhile to play to this day. It holds up. Yeah, that collection's pretty awesome. I never really played the Game Boy game, so I finally got to do that. See, I played, and I'm going a little off track, but I played the first Game Boy game, but I had never played the other two before the collection came out. And uh, yeah, they, they're they really good, especially that third one. That third one kind of like has almost a, uh, like a Metroidvania feel to it. Yes, it does. Yep, I really liked it. Well, I'm going to get ready to wrap this, but before I do, Gibbs, you want to go ahead and uh, plug your shows and any, anything else you want to plug before we hop off here? Yeah, you can go to BadSecretMedia.com to find everything that I'm all about there and other shows under the Bad Secret Media uh, label. There's a Nocturnal Mysteries in my show, Secret Levels Podcast. Go check out the Secret Levels Podcast. We're absolutely everywhere. Myself and Toby Von Doom, we go review games. If you love retro games, you're going to like it. If you like dick jokes and very not safe for work humor, you're uh, more than welcome to come and have a good laugh with us. Sometimes at our expense. Go check out the Secret Levels podcast. And thank you for having me on the show. It was a great time. Hey, thank you for taking the time to come on and uh, BS with me a little bit about some Ninja Turtles. And uh, again, if you're out there listening, if you like my stuff, go check out Secret Levels. They are an amazing show. Uh, easily one of the funniest duos I've heard. So if you li- like comedy, if you like video games, it's like the perfect combination. It's like peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> if you like Canadians and Texans. <laughs> I cannot wait for you guys to meet up. Like that'll be that's gotta be recorded whenever that finally happens. We <laughs> <laughs> just fight. Oh no. <laughs> it's like a side scrolling beat em up. <laughs> 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 All right, man. Thanks for joining on and uh, hopefully we can catch you on another one of these again. This is fun. Oh shell yeah, brother. All right. Thanks man. for having me. Thank you. episode thank you for taking the time to listen and again huge thanks to goobs from secret levels for joining in for our talk on uh, turtles 4 uh we do have a discord if you check the comments or the show notes comments <laughs> i can english right so check the show notes we've got a discord link there is also a patreon link if you'd like a shout out at the end of every episode We do have friends of the show. Of course, we've already talked about Secret Levels. That's the show that Gibbs is on. Be sure to check them out. They're a big friend of the show. Also recommend you check out Retro Gaming Roundup. They've got a huge back history and back catalog, and it's an amazing show. Uh, The intro music done by Evan King. Uh, Check him out on YouTube. Uh, The intro song that I use is called 20XX. 
because, of course, I'm a huge Mega Man fan. Of course, I choose something like that. A uh, new artwork from the show coming from Toby Von Doom. I'm getting ready to debut that pretty soon. And that will close out this show. Again, thank you for taking the time to listen to me and my retro gaming rambling. Have a good one.